So I'm in the suburbs of Madison, Wisconsin right now at one of the coolest and the biggest reptile shops here in the state of Wisconsin. This is Reptile Rapture. You guys may remember I did a video here a couple of years ago. Well, this is a brand new and much bigger shop. It's been completely renovated and it's doubled in size. So I'm going to take you guys on a tour of Wisconsin's biggest reptile shop. And I'm also going to show you why there's so much more to this place than just a reptile shop. I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. Richard, we are back and this place has changed so much since the last time I was here. This is like double the size now. Yep, we've added what, over 150 some odd enclosures to what we already had here. And you had a lot to begin with. Yeah, yeah, we had a hundred and I forgot how many we had, but yeah, we had quite a bit. Yeah, we are standing in the amphibian section right now. So all of these enclosures, they're all amphibians. Yep, yep, this is all going to be, we're slowly getting them all filled up now. Like I said, it's 150 some odd enclosures here. This is mainly all dart frogs all over on this side. And then we're putting all the tree frogs around the top. We have some like glass tree frogs here and stuff like that. But yeah, and then wow. Pac-Man's just a huge variety of Pac-Man's. And I think we just sold out on all our tomato frogs. And all those guys sell fast. Horn frogs, you know, all that stuff. All right, but out of all the amphibians you've got here, this marine toad. Todd. Todd the marine toad we have got to take him out these are like my favorite amphibians on the planet especially big Jabba looking guys like that can we take him out yeah. look at this dude he's growing he's a rescue that we took in he came from what was that I think uh New Jersey he came all the way from New Jersey yeah not yeah. not Florida no nope, New Jersey <laughs> Because, you know, there's a couple of roads that you can cruise down in Florida and, well, oh, yeah. see these guys just hopping all over the place down there. But look at this big chubster. Two points, and he's 2.6 pounds, two and a half pounds. Yep. Which is a whole lot of toad. Now I've seen him up to five pounds. Absolutely. So he's going to be doing some growing. Well, there's a reason why these are the biggest toads in the world. Hey, nice to meet you, buddy. He's like, it is not nice to meet you. Yeah, he loves his roaches. Yeah, well, good thing I'm not a roach. So we just put Todd back in. Look at him puff up. You can really see how big this toad is right here. Uh, but he's not for sale. Is he just a store pet? Everybody fell in love with him. What? Well, exactly. Yeah, so we've exactly. had him for, it's been over a year, like about two years now. Really? So he's been the store pet. He's the store pet. All right, so over here we have something really unique and rare that we don't see in a lot of reptile shops. Andean marsupial frogs. Mm -hmm. Let's check these out. All right, have a look at this guy. So that is an Andean marsupial frog. These are from South America, hence the name Andean. Mm -hmm. But these are like some of the most unique frogs because the reason why they're called marsupial frogs is, do you want to go for it or should I? Go ahead. Go because ahead. they look like opossums. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was the only marsupial I could think of on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Kangaroo. There, I thought of another. Oh, you're gonna say, oh, whoa, nope. I thought you were gonna say. See, he bounces like a kangaroo. You thought I was gonna say what? I thought you were gonna say a sugar glider or something like that. Oh, sugar glider. That would have been another good marsupial. All right, so leaving the frog section, look at this section. This is all geckos. We've got crested geckos. We've got gargoyle geckos. We've got um, mystery gecko. What's the story on the mystery gecko? I don't know. I don't even know what's in here. It might have been a rescue that came in because here's another rescue right here. Rescue leopard gecko yeah. in here. I don't... Is there anybody in there? Yeah, I'm sure there is. Well, let's see what the mystery is. And we're going to find out what the mystery gecko is right after this. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house, and I use them exclusively for all my insect-eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. All right, so 
What is the mystery gecko? Oh my god, look at this. This is totally a mystery gecko. I am completely stumped. I have no clue what kind of gecko this is. That's not a meta three. No. No. Okay, that is a mystery gecko. I have no clue what gecko that is. <laughs> so it has been a long time since I've walked into a reptile shop and not recognized one of the reptiles that's found here. So gecko people, comment below and let us all know what you think this mystery gecko is. It's a ground dwelling gecko, but man, I'm stumped. So comment below, what kind of gecko is this? And then up here, we've got all sorts of chihuahuas up here. We've got lily whites down here. We've got leopard geckos now. You mentioned that you take in rescues. So how many leopard gecko rescues, crested gecko rescues do you take in? Um, quite a bit. Snakes, ball pythons, everything. Monitors, daily. It's actually daily. They get shipped to us. They're local, uh, people are moving for school or jobs and they can't take their animals, so they come to us. We get a lot of them that are in just horrible shape. Sure. And we yeah, show the before and after. So the UW works with us and you know helps us with all the surgeries and stuff. It's pretty amputees. awesome that you take these in. And that's one of the things that kind of sets you apart from other reptile shops mm -hmm. is you care about the animals. We you sell care the about animals. The welfare, yeah. right? We sell the animals, so you should, you know, be willing to take them in, make space for them. So we do. We got a whole room back there full of rescues. And this is the rescue rack. Yeah, this was. If you saw those geckos out front. Yeah. They pretty much came out of all these tubs. Wow. And now, do I remember that these used to be Garrick de Myers? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You remember? Usually, I don't have that good a memory. Oh, man, but I got here these, we are. Got these from him when I opened my store back yeah. in 2008. Wow. Can we see? Uh, can we see some of these guys? Hi, buddy. There's a rescue. This one. This one's not taking any meds. Some of them are on medication. So this one isn't really doing the meds very well. And so look at the enclosure. It's just a plain paper towel with a water dish back there. And the reason why this is so minimalistic like this is because this is how to keep it sterile. And if this poor little dude is on medication, he needs as sterile of a enclosure as they can possibly give him. So this one is on daily critical care and gets eye drops every day. What's wrong with his eyes? He had eye infections, but look at his eyes now. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we got some photos of him before where his eyes were puffy and cloudy. Oh, you boy. couldn't see any, and they were just big, bulging eyes. We were talking about that outside. It's like, yeah, you sell you know, these when they're ready. You're still investing probably more money than you're making in food and care and employees, employees. and medicines. So we actually run a legit 100% nonprofit. Nobody gets paid from the nonprofit. It all goes towards the animals. And we've been doing this for years. For years, we've always doing it. But then we were spending so much money at the university with their vets and stuff. And they're the ones who told me, hey, you should make it like a legit nonprofit so yeah. we can give you a discount. So then we did, which helped us there. But yeah, we, we got rescues in this place that we've had for years. So actually, honestly, when people support our store, they're supporting the rescue because I take the money out of Reptile Rapture and donate it into the rescue to pay the vet bills. So you are uh, definitely much more than just a retail reptile shop. So this is another one of the back rooms where there's a lot of breeders in here, but Richard just told me that there's a rescue back here that we just have to meet, and he's right over here. So we just got this rescue in the other day. Okay. It's the biggest roughneck monitor I have ever seen. Oh, Black roughneck oh monitor. my God, how are you doing, Chubby? Never seen one that big before. He is like a water monitor size. Somebody was just feeding the heck out of him. On the oh wrong diet. man. He can't climb the branches. He's just too overweight. Oh my god, that's so terrible. And these guys spend a lot of their time in the trees. Yeah, well, these are tree yeah, monitors. They're tree monitors. Yeah. They spend a lot of time in the trees. And he just, look at how we have the log. Yeah. And he can't get up on that. Oh my god. Yeah, he can only be on the ground here because he is so obese. Oh, that is so sad. So are you going to like what? Give him a, get him a Peloton, a uh, membership to Planet We're Fitness? We're going to get him a membership to Planet Fitness, right, right. get him up on that treadmill <laughs> and have him start running. Dang. He needs it. Oh, that is sad. What, was, what were they feeding him? Just a rat a day? They were probably giving him rodents, just a rodent diet. So there is another room full of rescues, and you said you had a very special bearded dragon in that room. This is Orange. We've had her for years now. 
We had, uh, she had cancer. Oh no. We had to amputate one of her legs. Oh no. And then the cancer came back. So we had to take her back in. So she gets this little stuffed animal. She's pretty much just been our store, <laughs> store little mascot. And she looks very comfortable. Yeah, she's very comfortable. She gets the best. She's gone through a lot. Oh, you can see where they that. had to laser her right there because the cancer was coming back. Oh no. And they had to laser her. No, oh, it's already gone. She had a scar up here too. But it went away. They think they got it all. And she doesn't have that leg. But we get a lot of bearded dragons where we have to do amputees. Oh, it's so sad. But you know what? This lizard would be long history if it wasn't under your care. Wow. She's gone through a lot. So we try and give her the best here. She and gets her little cat bed and her little stuffed animal. Oh, look at that. Up there. She literally lays on this. If you go to our Instagram, you'll see pictures of her just laying on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. We've only seen two sections. We've seen the frog section and now the gecko Our section. Gecko section. There is so much more to see here. Look at these guys. So you got these black tree monitors hanging out here. These are my black trees. They're out here because we have rescue monitors in their enclosures. Ah, okay. So that's us. We take in so many rescues. My breeding room is actually starting to turn into a rescue room. Into a rescue room, right? Yeah. So the coolest thing is, is that they're in this hexagon enclosure that is like the centerpiece of the store and that is a really cool thing we're gonna move down here i see we got uh, a lot of orange sunburst zero iguanas here which are really cool how many iguanas do you sell um quite a bit uh, a lot of rhino iguanas yeah blue iguanas those are really popular uh we've got some turtles down here and some tortoises over there i see on the central american wood turtle it says not for sale yet this is another person that was going off to college and yeah, look at this yeah shell we've only had them a few days here it's looking pretty rough yeah so he'll be with us for quite a while yeah it'll take him a while to heal all those scoots like that he looks like he has a little bit of a parrot beak going on there yeah. he's gonna be going in the back we got a bunch of rescue tortoises back there but we're gonna be building a, a pen for him so yeah. he can have a nice humid area and a little aquatic area for him yeah, they were probably keeping them dry like a tortoise. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They didn't know what they had. Right. But then we turn the corner over here and we have a rhino iguana. And this guy is, looks to be a female, maybe. Hard to tell at this age. Um, actually, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is the snake wall over here. Mm -hmm. And I see we've got, um, got some- snakes from here down and then lizards along the top. So lizards along the top, snakes on the way down. We're gonna check out some of these snakes, but I just wanna point out this cool boa right here. So the way I know that that's a Peruvian boa is, look at his name, Iquitos, which is one of the cities that I've been to in Peru, and that's the jumping off point when you go down the Amazon. So guys, I'm sure you all by now have seen the Ball Pythons in the Wild movie, but comment below if you want me to go from Mexico all the way down to Argentina and do a feature length movie about boas. All right, so in here we have an ornate Euromastix, which are my favorite Euromastixes, Ready? other than all the other Euromastixes that are my favorites. Look at that, it's just a little baby ornate Euromastix. These are one of the Euromastix that I've actually seen in the wild, and so these have a really soft spot in my heart. And depending on its gender, you can see why they're called ornate Euromastix here. But if this is a male, he's going to get blues and reds and just all sorts of rainbow colors as an adult. And man, if he's female, well, not so colorful, but still pretty colorful. So right down here in this enclosure, we have one of the coolest snakes. This is a yellow patternless anaconda. So guys, have a look at this. This is a yellow patternless anaconda. These are so rare to find in a reptile shop, but look at this. He is just calmed right down. And when you handle a snake, 
you have to know how to read the body language and part of that body language is watching those tongue flicks so if he had really rapid tongue flicks it would mean that he's really nervous but if he has those slow kind of methodic tongue flicks that means that he's at ease he's curious he's calm and he just wants to figure out what's going on and look at that after a while he just sits right on your hand like that calms right down this is one of the coolest snakes that you're going to find here at Reptile Rapture, for sure. Just look at that pattern on him. He's not really 100% patternless, like, you know, for instance, like a patternless bull snake or a patternless Burmeses, but he's almost kind of like hypo. There's still a little pattern left there, but I assume that that pattern will fade as he gets to be an adult more and more. Yeah. Man, that is absolutely gorgeous. So a lot of people, unfortunately, will buy anacondas because they get to be huge snakes. And it's kind of like the, hey, come over to my house and check out my big snake. If that's the reason why you're getting a big snake, do us all a favor and don't. But if you want to work with anacondas, you have to check your local ordinances because these are banned in a lot of places like Florida, for instance. And if you want to work with an anaconda, I would suggest working up. So get a ball python, work with that. Get a Burmese python, work with that. Work your way up to getting an anaconda because these guys will be big. These guys will need huge enclosures, if not a room-sized enclosure. But yellow anacondas, they don't get as big as green anacondas, but they still will get big and they still have very specialized care and these are definitely not for beginners such a cool snake and so to put him back I'm just gonna let him just crawl right off my arm and go explore his cage look at that that's the way to put an anaconda back all right such an amazing snake see you later buddy here I'll uh, I'll renovate your house for you there there you go Perfect. All right, so leaving my new friend, the anaconda. Up here, we've got a Kingsville red bull snake. All you can see is his little tail poking out there. Very cool snake. Green basilisks up here, more bearded dragons, but what caught my eye is right down here. Flix, who's a purple tegu. That is a big old bruiser of a tegu. Look at that, he's just really curious, checking out my hand, which probably smells like an Egg McMuffin. But look at this big dude. Flix here is also a rescue, and how long have you had Flix? A uh, year and a half. About a year and a half. Yeah. How was he when he came in? He wasn't too bad. He was a little, you know, let's say food aggressive. Sure. So you had to be careful. Sure. But then he got used to us really quick and just, you, can, you saw as I went in there, you could just reach in and pull him out. Yeah. No problem whatsoever. Puppy dog tame. Just feel those big old jowls on this boy. Man, what an awesome lizard. So he just became available for sale just mm -hmm. recently, didn't he? Yeah. Wow, and he is, let's check it out, 520 American dollars. Amer American, right? Yeah. You take American currency? Yep. Yeah, okay, yep, yep. American only, please. Okay. Wow, what a big, beautiful lizard. So now you see why Reptile Rapture here in Wisconsin isn't just the biggest reptile shop in Wisconsin, it's also so much more so guys real quick i just want to give a real quick shout out and a thank you to all of my patreon supporters if you would like to become a patreon supporter that link is in the description below i sincerely appreciate it and guys as always thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure love the planet feed your reptile obsession and rattle on